Hey guys, I am the math professor, Kyle Martin, and in this video, I'm gonna give you five answers straight off of our first geometry test. All right, so this is what's gonna be on there. We have planes, lines, rays, midpoints, endpoints, Pythagorean theorem, and then complements and supplements. All right, so there's timestamps in the description below. Jump ahead to whichever one you need. Let's get into it. All right, if you really thought I was gonna give you five full answers from the test, you're crazy. I'm not gonna do that. But what I am gonna do is show you some different ways that if you watch this video, you're gonna be way more likely to get a better grade on the test than if you didn't watch this video. Let's try number one. All right, first thing I promised you was collinear, coplanar, and intersection problems. So given this plane right here, it's called plane F. Remember, we use cursive capital letters to name planes. Um, the first one says, name another name for plane F. Well, we can also name planes instead of using that cursive capital letter by using three points that are on the plane. Okay, so I'm looking here at this plane. I have this kind of line that goes outside of it. I have this line that's on it, and I have all these points in here. Okay, we have to be a little bit careful, uh, but I'm seeing that this line right here is all on that plane, as well as point D. Point E is not. Remember, this is like if I have a piece of paper, and the line is sticking through that piece of paper. So E is not, but I could use three other points. I'm going to just use A, B, and D. All right, so I'm going to say plane... A, B, D. Okay, there's no bars above it, no arrows, no nothing. Just use plane and then three points that are on that plane. Number two, three name three collinear points. Okay, that just means that the three points are on the same line. So we have a couple choices here. We could use line J where we have point F, B, and E. Okay, so we could say one of them points, points F, B, and E. Um, or, that's perfectly acceptable answer, or another answer is your other line. Line K has A, B, and C, okay? So I'd say points A, B, and C. Okay, both of those would be perfectly good answers. Number three, name two rays that are coplanar with segment BC. I know this is a segment because there's no arrows above that bar. It's just the bar. All right, so let's look at BC here. That's this one. And BC, it says it wants two rays that are coplanar. So we said earlier that this line is not coplanar because it's sticking through that paper, right? The dotted line means it's on the other side. So I am only down to this line here, line K. And I need two rays, basically, that are on line K. And we have a bunch of different options. You could say ray AB, ray AC, ray BC, ray CB, or ray CA. Um, there might even be another one there, BA or something, right? So we just need to name two of those. Let's just go AB and AC. And since I'm using the endpoint A, I'm going to write that first, AB. And it's pointing that way, so I know that N, the A is the endpoint. It's going past B. And then the other one I wanted was Ray AC. Okay. All right, number four. This one says I need the intersection of line J and line K. Intersection is just wherever they cross. Where do those two things touch each other? So if I look at this here, I see uh, line J and line K touch each other at point B. Okay, so I would just say point B. Point B is where they touch each other. Okay, and I did give you a bonus one for this uh, first section. That is, we need to name another, or give another name for segment AB. Now, if you look at segment AB here, it's only talking about this specific part. So I need to name that in a such a way where it means the same thing, right? Nothing more, nothing less. And the only way to do that is to flip the letters and call it segment BA. It's still a segment, all right? But you're just flipping the letters, so segment BA. Hey, all right, moving on to part two. All right, part two, we're talking midpoint formula. Here we have our midpoint formula over here, x2 plus x1 over two, uh, comma, right, this is my x values, this is my y values, it's an ordered pair, comma, y2 plus y1 over two, or in other words, your average of your x's plus your average of your y's. All right, our question says, find the midpoint of points, negative seven, four, and six, negative 12. So, I'm not seeing any X's and Y's over here, so how in the world am I gonna plug that in? Well, remember, these are ordered pairs, or sometimes they're called X, Y pairs because they're written in the form X, Y. All right, I can call that X, Y, and call this X, Y, and then I have two of these. So let's call this maybe X1, Y1 for my first point, X2, Y2 for my second point, and then I can plug those into my formula, right? So let's plug these in. We have my X2, six, and my X1, negative seven. Six plus a negative seven, all divided by 2. And then for my y values, I have uh, y2, negative 12, plus 4, my y1, divided by 2. 
And then it's just a matter of simplifying these until we get an ordered pair. All right, six plus a negative seven is negative one. Negative one over two is just negative one half. All right, we can leave it that way. Negative 12 plus four is negative eight. You need to do a little side work, that's okay. Negative eight divided by two is negative four. So over here we'd have negative one half for the x's and negative four for the y's, all right? And this is the midpoint of those two points over there. And you can check it, right? You can check it. In between negative seven and six should be negative one half. It is, okay? What about negative four? Is that in between four and negative 12? Yeah. So you know that you did it probably right if those two end up between the two points that you were originally given since this is the midpoint formula. All right, part three. In this one, we're gonna be given an endpoint and a midpoint, we have to find the other endpoint. In fact, this is what it says. Given endpoint E, negative six, three, and midpoint M, four, negative one, find the other endpoint, okay? The easiest way to do this is to draw a picture of it. All right, now I know on a coordinate plane, this would probably be an angled line, uh, but for simplicity's sake, Let's just draw a horizontal line. We'll label it E for endpoint, right? Call that E, call my midpoint M. And then I'm looking to find this one. We'll call it question mark, all right? E is gonna be negative six, three. M tells me it's four, negative one. And then I'm looking to figure out what the coordinates of the question mark is, all right? So let's just think about what we did here. From negative six to four for my X values, I went up. In fact, I went up 10, right? You can say negative six plus 10 uh, gets you to four. So I have to go up 10 more so that this stays in the middle. It's the midpoint, right? So 10 plus four gets me to 14. Okay, same idea for the Y values from three down to negative one, I went down four. So I have to go down four more in order to keep this in the middle in the, as the midpoint. So down four more from negative one is at negative five. And right here, are the coordinates for our other endpoint. All right, part four. This time we're using the Pythagorean theorem. And this question says use Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side of this right triangle. All right, this right triangle, we have a leg. Remember, there are two legs are the ones next to our right angle. The right angle is denoted by this box. Okay, so we have one of them, which is five. We're looking to find the other one, I'll call it X. And then remember across from our right angle is called the hypotenuse. In this case, it's 13. Okay, so we need to remember that the Pythagorean theorem is A squared, plus b squared equals c squared, where c is gonna be the hypotenuse, the one across from our right angle, and a and b are gonna be both of our legs, okay? So here, a squared, I can replace that with five squared, b squared, I'm gonna call that x squared, because I don't know that side, that's what I'm looking to solve. Then lastly, my c squared is gonna be 13 squared. Okay, so this one just involves a little bit of math. Uh, if you need a calculator, that's fine. You can try this on your own if you want. Five squared is 25. X squared, we still don't know, and then 13 squared is 169. All right, so to get the X squared term by itself, I need to move the 25 over by subtracting it. Subtract that. Oh, subtract 25 on both sides. That cancels over here. And then X squared equals, let's see, that's four, four, 144. 144, and then remember when you have just the X squared left, in order to get rid of the square, you can take the square root. All right, if you take the square root on one side, you gotta do it to the other side. So the square root and the square cancel, leaving me with just x. And then remember the square root of 144 is 12. Okay, the last type of problems you're gonna see on the test um, here in this section, this fifth section, are gonna be about complements and supplements, okay? In fact, remember in class when we talked about complements, I always had you write down the complements equals 90 degrees on your papers. And same thing for supplements, supplements are? 180, good job. All right, 180 degrees. So 180 degrees are two angles that add up to be a supplement and complements are two angles that add up to be 90. Okay, so the first one says find the complement and supplement, both, right, and supplement of angle A. Here we have angle A, it's 15 degrees. So that's complement, uh, we need 15 plus something to equal 90. And the only thing that would do that is 75, okay? So 75 degree um, angle would be the complement of angle A here, the 15 degree angle. And then the supplement, again, same idea, 15 degrees plus what equals 180. And that would be 165, okay? 165 degrees adds up to be 180. 
Okay, and then I have a bonus question here for you. Um, so if you've made it this far, thank you. Um, all right, let's try it. It says x plus 11 um, over on this angle, and then this side is 2x minus 47. So you have to remember that this is called a linear pair. Okay, a linear pair are two angles that add up to be 180 degrees and they're adjacent, they're next to each other. So to solve for these, what we can do is set up the equation where we add them together, x plus 11 plus the other one, 2x minus 47. And then we set those equal to 180. I kind of ran out of room there, equals 180. Okay, so let's combine our like terms on the left side. x plus 2x is 3x. 11 minus 47 is negative 36, okay, equals 180. All right, have to add 36 to the other side. And let's see, that's 6, 11, 1, uh, oops, that's 216. 216 equals 3x, divide by 3, divide by 3, Let's see, three goes into 21 seven times, uh, and then you'll have uh, six left over, so that would be 72, all right? So x equals 72, and this problem, that's what it asks us to do, is just solve for x. Now remember, if you wanted to plug this back in, for example, if you wanted to find this angle, it's not gonna be 72, you have to take that 72 and plug it in for x. 72 plus 11 would end up being 83, okay? And then let's say you want to find this angle, there's a couple ways to do it. You could take x and plug it in again, like we just did, or since you know the entire thing adds up to be 180, you can take 180 minus 83 and get your answer over here. I'll let you try that one on your own, but for right now, hopefully these five tips helped you out and you are ready to go uh, for our test, which is coming up, all right? If this did help you, uh, please like and subscribe. That really helps me out, and I will be making more of these for the future, and you want to stay up to date on those.